It's Two Jerks and Some Guests, a comedic look at the news you never knew existed, with your hosts, Josh and Jason. (laughs) This ought to be fucking good. Welcome to Two Jerks and Some Guests. This is Josh. Oh, I'm Jason. I'm Ziggy. And I'm Chase Naraki. <laughs> and that's Chase. He's got a full name. <laughs> oh, yes, he does. He's yeah. a badass name, too. Yeah, no. Naraki. Chase Naraki. I don't like you know what my favorite part is? is Instagram, uh, Narak Star. That's right. Uh, that's perfect. So, <laughs> so, what, like, your, what, your family history, Naraki is... It's Polish. Really? And I had never been to Poland until really? in June, and then I spent a month there. So, I went from not knowing anything about my family or my culture to... Oh. immediately being completely immersed in it. So well, that's awesome. Yeah, so I mean there's a lot of people out there that don't know their names. They don't know their history or families or anything like that. Right. I didn't and then I went there uh-huh. and it's right. kinda, you know, interesting. Yeah. So that's a big part of why I want to go to Ireland because I've seen like we've done the uh, genealogy stuff and I've seen my mother in law found the actual uh, the shipping manifest that my grandparents signed when they came over from Ireland in like 1915 or something like that, mm-hmm. and then I, then they've traced my family back to like 1050 or some shit through all the stuff that wow. they've been able to find. So this exact same way, like I would love to go to Ireland just to kind of see. I didn't have any appreciation before, right? But then you go there and it's like, yeah. okay, yeah. He's got this really cool picture. It's right on the border of. Uh Poland and where did you go? Slovakia. Slovakia. It's just this canyon, and he's standing at the top of it. He's just got this just perfect selfie looking down into a canyon. It's like that's one of the coolest places on the. They should film a movie right there. <laughs> yeah, and it's got it, glacier lakes, so like they're mm. thousand foot stepped levels that's as awesome. you go up. Yeah. So Chase, I follow you on Facebook. These guys don't. As much. That's <laughs> fine. They don't I like that. Really? We just, I, uh, we just met we today. We just met him. But I gotta say, I gotta say, I gotta say this. I've been to, like, I think I've been to 13 countries total and 41 states. And he's thinking of that oh, as that's a lot. probably a lot. I've been to nothing compared well, to what you've done. And I lived in so I think 41 <laughs> states is a good accomplishment because that's, uh, you've, you're not going to be taking flights to 41 states no. necessarily. Yeah. So to drive I've never through been 41 north is of the Mason Dixon line. Significant. For the <laughs> God, I'm See, fucking yeah, 13 like a flea countries, right now. 13 countries isn't a lot. And that, yeah. the reason I say that is because Europe's a, is half the oh, size yeah. of America yeah. right. and you can go to 13 countries within right. three train rides. Yeah, Europe yeah. is like the is like the United States of just countries. Yeah. yeah. You just have like, so many well, yeah, because you don't realize that you really look you could at a hit map. Luxembourg, you could hit Italy, you mm-hmm. could hit France on a train and right. be done, and, and go through five countries in a day. And that's why I'm so jealous of those the people over there, because I'm just like, yeah, you just say, let's just go to Germany. You're like, okay. Like, I'm like, let's go to Georgia for the day. Let's go to Atlanta. <laughs> it's a six hour drive. <laughs> let's go to Atlanta. It's <laughs> yeah. It's a world of difference. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, literally. But so, so, one of my favorite things is he doesn't. He doesn't say anything before he goes on these trips. He just goes. He just disappears. And just disappears until like three or four days later, and he's got a picture scuba diving in Thailand or something like that. That would be amazing. And it's just, it's incredible. So how many countries, I, I bet you don't have an exact number, but on estimate, have you been to? I'd say I'm right at 40, and it might be 39, it might be 41. Um, but insane. I've been to every continent except for uh, Oceania. Which is New Zealand or Australia, and then uh, South America. But other than that, I mean, I've touched down and spent time, or significant amount of time, pretty much everywhere else. That's fucking cool. So where, where, where would you say is probably the coolest place you've been to? I, you know, everybody asks me that because when you post shit mm-hmm. that people look at and go, "That's cool," then they always follow with, "Oh, that's so. I wish I could go on vacation." Uh, Where's the coolest place you've ever been? So pretty much the exact same question, and I always tell people the Philippines, oh, yeah. and then the follow-up question to that is, why the Philippines? That was literally yeah. what my and brain just yeah, went. that's what yeah. my brain did. Yeah. And, okay, so most people will say, I went to Australia, I went to Germany, I went to Mexico, I went to the Bahamas, and they'll say those are their favorite trips, and you know maybe they did it as a family, maybe they did it as a honeymoon, maybe they did it as a spring break before they started college, whatever. So most people will say those generally iconic countries. I say the Philippines because it's relatively untouched. Uh Everyone speaks English. 
the dollar is extremely strong. Yeah, it was actually a U.S. territory until 1946. That's true. So, so everyone, you don't really think about that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so everyone in the Philippines speaks English fairly well too. I mean, you could go there and have a significant conversation with almost anybody, Um, and it's it's relatively safe, with the exception of uh, Mindanao, which is the southern territory of the Philippines, which is invaded by ISIS right now. Yeah. Mm, but uh, yeah, but that. that being said, you stay away from that place. I mean, it's just like anywhere. You stay away from Chicago. You stay away from Detroit, East St. Louis. I mean, That's right. stay out of trouble. So my question is, though, with your travels, is this like a you have the means to just travel? Or is it job related? Like, no, how do you you just no, go? Just, it's it's not job related at all. In fact, I quit my job a year ago to travel. To just travel. Yeah. So he, I he one about a year ago got sick of people asking like. How much he spends on these. So now he posts on Facebook, uh, leaving from LAX to Brussels, it's only $320 round trip right now. And he just hunts these great deals yeah. and finds these amazing deals. I get fed like, up with people asking me, Yeah. Hey, I want to go here. How much is it? So I just start posting it, mm-hmm. which is funny because whether I tell people about it and they ask questions or whether I post it, the reaction is still the same. Nobody yeah. books trips. Yeah. Nobody, right. nobody cares. It's like people, well, you actually, you actually booked, you actually helped me book a trip because I was like, I had to go to Puerto Rico, and you, I was like, I need a flight to Puerto Rico, and I don't want to pay six hundred dollars. So I messaged him, and he's like, "Well, look around," and he looks around, and he show, he tells me what he does, and I find it, and it's like. Seventy five percent cheaper than you just find if you type in on oh, yeah. AOL right or one Google to search. Puerto Rico is like a hundred and fifty bucks. I went to Puerto Rico twice last year. Mm-hmm. Twice, eighty one dollars round trip each time. Mother, that's God. fucking eighty one dollars round yeah. trip each yeah. time on JetBlue. Mother Blue. of God. And I spent a week there both times. I went Memorial Day weekend, mm-hmm. and then I went uh, Martin amazing. Luther King Jr. weekend. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Uh, both both times I spent almost a week there. Both times. <laughs> Had a blast. It's very cheap. This is before Hurricane yeah. Maria went yeah. right through. Or, yeah. yeah. But uh, Puerto Rico is great. That's a, that's probably one of our, our best territories, honestly. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. cheap. Everybody also speaks English, whether they choose to or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fair. And it's easy to get around. You yeah. use a U.S. driver's license. You don't need to get on an international mm-hmm. cell phone plane because your cell phone's at work. So <laughs> you don't need a passport. So like, if anybody wants to do a travel like that, Puerto Rico is a great stepping stone. Oh, center. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you... <laughs> I saw about three years ago you got your scuba diving instructors thing. No, I'm not an instructor. I'm I'm a I'm technically a master diver, which is different from dive master. Regardless, I've been diving for ten years, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I've got over three hundred dives under my belt. I'm a rescue diver too. Like any, none of it really matters necessarily unless I need to use it. But for the most part, I just dive because I love it. Yeah, but he's got like he just like. Hey, take a look at this crustacean <laughs> under the water here in, you know, Myanmar or whatever you're yeah. he's at. And it's like, oh, God, it's just amazing. This is awesome. Um, but so I want to ask about something real quick. You uh, you have been to the Middle East uh, or close, yeah. correct? Where, where exactly have, have you been there? S- Cyprus, which just about touches uh, Turkey. Mm-hmm, right. And uh, I've also spent time with, and it's it's not considered the Middle East, however, is it, I guess what some people would c- call the Middle East. It's Morocco. Mm-hmm. Um, it's part of North Africa, but it's, I mean, you've got North Africa and the Middle East, which are... Uh, I mean, kind of clumped together yeah. in right. terms of and, turmoil. And people, yeah, people always kind of tend to forget it because when you see that space in there, you're like, well, this is kind of like two continents just smashing yeah. into each other. Yeah. So, so well, I, I have a real quick question. So, um, have you, so traveling to all these countries, have you ever had any like, like dangerous experience? Any any problems with like law enforcement or military? Anything like that? Where have oh, you traveled absolutely. to countries to where you're you have? It's not the it was not the safest environment for you. Yeah, to be absolutely. In. I, I went to Honduras in 2012. I got held at gunpoint, um, oh. and mm. uh, I was let go only because there were other people coming around the corner in a car 
that was much nicer than the car. I was I was in a taxi. I was coming back. I was coming from the airport. I had just landed. I was in the country less than an hour. <laughs> so, and they yeah, got so the old like, Honduras so like, welcome. They love, like, Honduras. I love Honduras. Yeah. It's a beautiful country. Oh, what? they did that to you too. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I mean, it, it, aptly named, it, it would be considered one of those shithole countries. And, and I don't say that from a political standpoint. I say it because it's actually true. I mean, like, yeah. if you go there and you look at the way people are living, if you go to many of the countries around the world and look at the way people are living, you would subconsciously think this is a shithole country. And yeah. we, we, don't, we don't necessarily know how well we have it because you're living in this little isolated pocket of America right. mm-hmm. where you can go into any McDonald's and ask for a free cup of water with ice right. and nobody's going to charge you right. and everywhere has air conditioning right. yeah. that that logic doesn't apply yeah. to the rest of the world but but in Honduras I got held at gunpoint um, uh, a little kid uh, was flashing a gun at me in Morocco come to find out it was a toy gun but I mean it's one of those things where what? it's what? it's dark, <laughs> it's Which dark at whiting? night Which one mm-hmm. be yeah. you're walking around this little kid flashes a gun I don't know that it's a toy gun mm. right. the last thing I want to do is get popped in the ass mhm yeah. It reminds me of the scene from uh, Blazing Saddles. Little, little kid shot, shot me in the right ass. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so well, I have an international story, and they've all heard it. Um, we got, we went on a cruise and ended up in Mexico. Where'd you go? Mexico? And uh, we're leaving uh, St. Cat Frogs, Senor Frogs, or whatever it's called. And we rented a Jeep, and my dad got pulled over, and my dad got a DUI in Mexico. But I don't think that transfers, does it? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All they want is you to do a little bit of grease in the palm. Oh, little yeah. propina is what yeah. they call it. Yeah. And so he goes, you can't drive here anymore. My dad takes the ticket. The guy is completely baffled that my dad took the ticket. So I get in the driver's seat. I get 100 yards down the road, and he flips his lights on again and pulls me over and gives me a speeding ticket. Like, are you guys going to get the idea that I just want you to hand me $100 and I'll let you go? And we took the tickets and we came back to the States and my dad's like, I wonder what I should do with this. And he contacted his friend who at the time was the sheriff of Marion County. This is 17 years ago. And he goes, what do I do with this? And he goes, just write a letter if you want and just toss the ticket. And just tell him you're not paying this and I'm never coming back to Mexico. And they just write it off as, you know, a loss kind of thing. But it's just it's just kind of funny that those kind of countries, they see Yeah, bureaucracy. Tourists. That's bureaucracy at its finest right there. I mean, you, you realize that in China or in the Middle East, it's just a way to do business. Yeah. You want something done, you pay off mm-hmm. who you want it to be done by. Yeah, and um, my, my cousin has a good story from... Uh, Germany, and they were traveling around Germany, and they wanted a tour guide. Well, the best tour guides over there are the criminals. <laughs> it's these criminal organizations. They'll be like, well, we'll make sure nobody messes with you, and we'll take you around. And you just call this number, and it's like a tour guide thing, but you get there, and it's some guy sitting there with a leather jacket, and it's like, oh, this is sketchy. And that's how you do business in all those countries that, like, this is poor parts of Germany because of their visiting family. And it was just, you know, that's just, ooh, it's a little scary to me. But, so, moving on, um, dude, I, I could talk to you for hours about where you've gone and stuff like that. Myanmar, your photos from Myanmar was, like, my favorite. That's a really isolated pocket of the world. It just got opened up for tourism. It was under pretty much dictatorship rule forever. It, people don't visit Myanmar. It's not a country that people go to, That's which is uh, all... It was re- retitled Myanmar. It used mm. to be called Burma. Mm-hmm. Oh, so okay. if you've heard yeah, of the yeah, name, heard of Burma. If you've heard of Burma, mm. that's what Burma is. Oh, it's okay. Myanmar. It's one yeah. of the newer countries yeah. in the world. Well, that's why I went to Cuba uh, a few years ago because they finally opened up yeah. the thing and that was so cool because you get there and it's like, Time warp. oh, yeah, it's just, we're in the 1950s. And See, I want to go to Bali. Bali be badass. Yeah. Bali, that's, that's always been my dream is to go to Bali. Go spend, uh, there was a, uh, this is years ago, back when I was a cop. Mm-hmm. They used to have all these things about like how to go to these different countries and spend like a month and only spend like a thousand dollars. And I remember the That's biggest true. one was Bali. You can go and rent a house on the beach that has electricity, running water, the whole nine yards, 
and it's like two hundred and fifty bucks. Bali is a lot more expensive now. I spent the mm-hmm. the entire month of April in Bali. Oh, okay. So I was there, and Bali's in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. It's it's the only uh, Hindu island in Indonesia. Um, the rest of Indonesia is Muslim, uh, mm-hmm. is is Islamic actually. So so Indonesia, random fact, is actually the world's largest uh, uh, Islamic country. Yeah. By population, yeah. Um, but yeah, Bali is it's it's beautiful. It's it's getting more touristy, so it's getting to be that Cancun or that uh, Bahamas or that Key West mm-hmm. vibe. Um, it's very close to Australia, so a lot of people come over there. It, it's still cheap, but I mean that's when you asked me earlier what's my favorite country. Like Indonesia is a great one, but mm-hmm. that's why I chose the Philippines because the Philippines isn't touch, there yet. Yeah, yeah this is about touch. a decade ago. A friend and I were talking. So in Indonesia. You cannot, as an American, you cannot buy property. You can only lease it. You can lease it for up to 99 years. Because we were looking at buying a bar in Bali, um, actually on the beach itself, with like, it came with a uh, catamaran, came with a catamaran, it was a three level bar, two, like the downstairs was a restaurant with like brick oven, it was $100,000. Something if you went anywhere here in America would be oh, yeah. half a million dollars easy. Yeah, there were the only, prices. But the only thing is, is that you can't. Again, you can't purchase it. Yeah, you're only leasing it. So at any time, the government can come in and go, "Eee, that's ours. Uh-huh. That's ours. You no. Know, we're gonna go ahead and take that back. No matter what you'd like, you're just giving them a hundred grand, uh-huh. and they're just going, ah, "I want that back." Good faith. So that's why we never did it. Yeah, that would have been fun though. Damn it. Yeah, kind of wish I had done that. now. Probably make good money too, because it's it's cheap there, but drinks are still five dollars a piece. Yeah, but you know that the liquor is considerably cheaper than what you get it here for. But yeah, well, and that was the thing is that I knew that it was exploding with the Australian New Zealand population as far as because we have some friends in Australia that that's the big spot for them to go. It's the it's closest where all the, like, the college kids go. It's their Cancun. Mm-hmm. It's their Bahamas for us. And they go all the freaking time. So. So what is your next trip? I think we talked about this. I'm, I'm going to be in New Orleans around this time tomorrow night, but I'm headed out uh, and I'm leaving in, pro- in in less than 24 hours, and I'm headed to Utah. I'm driving through the Panhandle if I can. I don't know how the traffic's going to be right now. You might from, want to go a little north. From what I heard, 80 miles of I-10 was shut off. But mm-hmm. uh, at any rate, i got to go through New Orleans. I'm going to go through Texas, New Mexico, uh, go up to Colorado and then end up in Utah and I'll be there probably by Tuesday. That's awesome. And then I'm going to do some hiking, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. One of, the, uh, one of my coolest photos I have is uh, I, I watched a, I was, we were hiking out in Utah and we watched a flash flood come through. Wow. One of the uh, little canyon, like canyon things. Little canyon. And it just, it starts off just this little line of water and then within 45 seconds it's Four foot deep, just rampage. That shit happens, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it's it. They talk like the guy that took us out on a few things because we first time we went, we wanted a guide and stuff like that. And the guide was sitting there. He goes, "Yeah, it's not unheard of for like, you know, the fishing game to find bodies out here that have been caught in the flash floods, and you don't find them for." Six months because they wash them six miles away in the middle of the desert. In the yeah. middle of the desert, They're just beat to death. Mm-hmm. That was another thing. Yeah, I remember. Well, I mean, they did law enforcement for a while. They used to do studies on that because you can actually get a flash. In Florida does a flash flood often, mm-hmm. but you can flash flood in Florida. Yeah, because of how low we are. And that was one of the things they were saying specifically. It's like you find a body with like this many different, like each bone's broken three different times. There's probability it was caught in a flash flood, and it just rolls and tumbles. It just everything busts apart. Yeah. So <clears throat> moving forward, real quick, um, we like to bring up just some fun stories and stuff like that. And me and Jason are huge into WWE and that sort of stuff. And Ziggy likes it. He just doesn't like to admit it. Ziggy like doesn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> Ziggy okay. does. I used to be a huge wrestling fan. Uh-huh. We all know this. So this has never been a Wolfpack NWO. I still do the hand. Yeah. I know what it is. Wrestling nowadays just sucks. It does. It's horrible. But the showmanship is gone. I will tell you this: if they do what I'm about to tell you, Vince McMahon has balls in an American company where we have lost our balls. <laughs> he, he, look, he needs to bring back. Like he needs to find another Ric Flair. He needs to find another Hulk Hogan. He needs to find another Macho Man Randy Savage, an Ultimate Warrior. He needs to bring back these strong 
bright characters instead of these fucking emo bastards he's got now. Yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, look at me, I'm so angry. So, so two years ago, I'll fill you in on this, two years ago Vince McMahon signed a giant contract with the Saudi government. Yes. Um, he, over a billion dollars, put him back into billionaire status, the company back into billionaire status, and put him personally into billionaire status. Um... And recently with the journalists, the Saudi Arabia thing with Turkey, um, they WWE is talking about pulling out of the contract. Um, <laughs> this is huge because this could be, you know, you only did two years of a 10-year contract. Well, what's the, what's the terminology in contract language? That's what I, that's what I would love to see. Well, they, they haven't released any of that stuff. But they're talking about this pay-per-view, which is actually supposed to happen not this weekend, but next weekend. Just not doing it. Well, the other thing is, if it's just a ploy, which we see all the time with media, mm -hmm. uh, it could build up the pay-per-view even more and yep. make people want to watch it more because there's the chance that they wouldn't get to, it, the yeah, exactly. anticipation. Yeah, the anticipation is going to kill everybody. But, so, the, the whole thing was, is WWE's doing this whole knight in shining armor thing we're going to cancel this thing and we're going to we're going to sacrifice so much money for the american way when your females aren't allowed to wrestle at the saudi arabia show you're not females are not allowed to come to the ring unless they're brought with a man and all this other stuff so they gotta wear burkas uh, I don't think so. Going to the ring because that would be interesting as hell. All of a sudden, we don't know like, because all the divas are like in burkas walking up. <laughs> that would be amazing because yeah. they would hate every second of it. Yeah, and I would laugh my ass off. Oh yeah, but um, so no female makes the trip to the show with the WWE. None of their female performers or anything like that. But you're playing this knight in shining armor. We may pull out of this contract because of the. Um, the journalists, which I agree they probably should. So you keep bringing up journalists in Turkey, and I don't So, know. Saudi Arabia, you probably know as much as I they do were about this. They were technically two, two journalists. Yeah. One is journalist that's been holed up in the Saudi uh, Arabia, or the uh, the embassy. Another one was just released today, mm -hmm. uh, which was a, pa uh, a pastor that went over there. And uh, he he got locked up in October of 2016. But there's this, there's this one that... It hasn't resurfaced from the embassy in 10 days, they think, that and was killed inside the embassy. Turkey says they have evidence um, that states These that they... These are Turkish nationals? They're U.S. Uh, residents. Okay. Um, and they went into I think the Turkish Tur citizens, correct? Uh, so I'm apparently saying. what it was was that they, they looked at surveillance footage, and there were 15 guys that landed in the airport, and they were members of the state, they were high officials, they were mem members of the military, and they were seen coming from, uh, I believe, Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. So they, they just, it sounds like a, a coup or something yeah. like that. So was this taking place inside Saudi Arabia? At, that's the, what, Turkey, the, that's at the Turkish embassy? That's no, what it was the uh, Turkish embassy. I think it was the Turkish. Embassy. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, like this whole story is just so. There's so many different it facts. Like a, it sounds like a political thriller. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. But like the whole thing is, like <clears throat> Turkey says, we have evidence that this man was slain. Mm -hmm. Like he was, he's dead. Mm -hmm. They think he, he was chopped up into small pieces and carried out individually. Mm -hmm. That's literally what they're yeah. thinking. And that's, if that's the case, that's you know, that that's. Trump just did a hundred and ten billion dollar uh, arms deal with Saudi Arabia that he would pull back on. He's he's already said that you know if this be be true, I could pull back on yeah, the deal. Saudi Arabia's been our friend, quote unquote, <laughs> for a very long time. Yeah, but um, so but the really, dude. but the first business, the the crazy thing is the first business that's trying to pull all their business out of there is. W the wrestling business. Mm -hmm. Look at here. We're gonna yeah, go that's wrestling. insane. They're talking about. Have you guys mentioned the Apple Watch? I oh, haven't yet. About the recording, mm -hmm. they might have possible because the guy was wearing an Apple Watch when this is all happening. Mm -hmm. They said they might possibly have the video or the at least the audio recording of him being murdered, or yeah. tortured. Yeah. Because yeah, they, they said that the people tried to get into his watch and unlock his password, and they got in it with his fingerprint, mm -hmm. and then uh, and they said they deleted some of the files, but there's a whole yeah, there's a whole thing now where they're looking into with Apple to find out if they might actually have audio evidence of what happened. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is only just a few hours ago I'm reading about it. Just a, a couple on? hours ago. Interrogation, torture, and killing were audio recorded and sent to both his phone and his iCloud. So if it's on the cloud, it's there well, yeah, forever. Yeah, it's I mean, if, yeah, if you've things. ever heard of a celebrity, it's there forever. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever seen the fappening, <laughs> it's there for it's, it's not going to disappear. Right. So, I just wanted to bring it up because I'm a huge WWE fan, and I'm just like, playing the knight in shining armor, but at the same time, we're not going to let our rest, our women... We're going to create a whole pay-per-view just so you guys think we're it's being true. progressive. Which we're not. It's true. <laughs> it's well, just because our women can't wrestle there. But they're not the only ones that have done that. I mean, China, uh, China's worked down a deal with, what, Facebook and Google, but they're mm. all for censorship. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, all these people want to sound like, yeah. uh, I guess the term social justice warriors or yeah. whatever they are, yes, whatever yeah, country. Yeah. But, I mean, look at Hillary Clinton, who took uh, $25 million from Saudi Arabia herself, mm-hmm. and she was the biggest candidate and proponent, I guess, for the LGBTQ, yeah. WZ, yeah. RNW, which is a stoning offense. But, but, it, right. but, I mean, if you look at it, like it's, it's a hypocritical offense, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm going to take money from these people who are going to throw them, and that's it's actually uh, in their law. Uh, the, find the tallest building in town, and mm-hmm. you would then throw, throw them, them off. Yeah, and, throw like, them off they, and they they, they they video it while they cheer. Mm-hmm. Woo! Yeah. Throw them off. And you're like you piece. I mean, shit. acknowledge the fact that that exists and give the money back. That would yeah. be the the right thing to do. Or Shit, acknowledge just, the fact that you don't care. That, yeah, you don't care. And right. Keep the money. Well, because the WD thing is their big pr- thing now is they have their w- women's revolution. Yeah. So true. they're doing that all female pay per view, and two but, weeks later they're going back to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So you're doing this whole, oh, we love women, and it's their first female pay-per-view, and revolution, and but then... It, so if it's a all... And, I, didn't, I don't watch wrestling, But so then you're going back to the country who literally says, those women cannot wrestle on our shows. But then the month or two weeks before, you're like, oh yeah, we love women, hey, women man. rights, blah, blah, blah. But when they're... But Money talks. Yeah, they're reportedly walks. paying them for... Te- they have a 10-year deal. $50 million a show. They're paying WWE. I've been doing back. a show every week. They're doing them. This <laughs> oh. is the second one in like six months. Oh no, I've been doing a show. So they're a week. doing, like, and then the, money. my favorite part about the Saudi thing is that they're they don't like current wrestling. They want all the old guys back. Yeah, because they love wrestling. attitude era I wrestling. Every, I think that would be the opinion of everybody. So I don't watch wrestling, but it's just <laughs> funny that they're bringing people. Like Shawn Michaels has been retired for eight years. He's coming out of retirement because of Saudi money. It's amazing how much money can motivate you. But I mean, if you think about it, like look at. As nostalgia is, as we get older, we always want the older stuff back. We're sitting mm-hmm. inside a comic book shop yeah, exactly. with all these comic books that are 30, 40, 50 years old. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And, I mean, that, yeah. people want this. This is in demand. Yeah. But nostalgia talks, you know, you want your Hulk Hogan. You want mm-hmm. your, uh, what, what is it, was it the you Andre want, the Giant? Andre you want the these guys. You want, as we're sitting in a comic book store, one of the best sellers, NES games. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, nobody, yeah. you, you got a PS4 game, everybody's got a PS4, but... You want to come over and play Super Mario on the NES? Yeah. Golden yeah. Eye on the Smash yeah. Brothers, right. Golden Eye, right. Golden right. Eye. Mario yep. Kart. And and nostalgia and is a, a huge market. Right, and with and collectors, too. Yeah, your nostalgia speaks. It's people want... They will also... Because you can go and download every NES game. In on a, an emulator. Yeah, 100, yeah. 100 megabytes. On a USB drive. 100 megabytes. <laughs> yeah. 980 games Running off made. a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep, but it's the nostalgia. They want to relive the childhood. They want the physical. Because that's I want to sit big... there and pull my N sixty four cartridge out. Well, and a big thing too. It's like it's a collector's thing. Like like hoarding is a huge thing. Like we oh, talk, yeah. we call them collectors, but they're hoarders. Yep. It's the, it's I collect and I'm, I'm I'm guilty of it. I don't collect anything. But it's like right, which I always find like, so fascinating, like, especially because you play honestly, Warhammer. Like, and it's ridiculously funny. But my entire life. Fits into my Kia Soul. Everything. That's insane to me. Everything. I would, that would be my number one, my number one first sentence on my Bumble profile. Hey, ladies. Yeah. My entire life my fits inside my <laughs> I'm just somewhat but SUV, I, somewhat yeah. minivan. Exactly. But I still it's have... It's actually considered a station wagon. Right. Oh, my God. I have it's to get one then. Of, it's classified. But then you got to be like, really but I still have... No, on the side. Yeah, oh, there'd be no for shit. I'd so you it. have to end it with, but I still have room for you. Yeah, I still have room for you. Yeah, you have room for you. I, so I, I do have a bumble, and my last line is, I'm here to swipe you off your feet. Oh, my God. Because the whole concept is swipe right, swipe left. Cheesy, I love it. But it's like one of those things. It's like you might as well say it. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I understand. I, yeah. No, I don't, know I don't even know what Bumble but is. But back to wrestling. So I, I have a thought on this. It's just I think maybe when wrestling ah. in its heydays was the biggest was the 
beginning and advent of video games and all these technologies, you know, the arcades. So it's like mm-hmm. it was ingrained in that culture. But now we have so many other things to distract ourselves with. Right. Like nobody's playing baseball or football or sports anymore. Everyone's mm-hmm. inside or, sure. you know, yeah. everybody's obsessed with Facebook or Instagram. We have so many distractions now. Yeah. Your yeah. phone. We don't, yeah, we don't need to... Fit, we legitimately don't need to watch wrestling or baseball or anything, anything anymore. It's true. Yeah. When was the last time you went roller skating? When was the last time you went ice skating? Actually, I went roller skating like a, only a few months ago because we have a rink that's local and it was my godson's birthday and they were doing it at the roller rink and I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm putting these skates on. But, so it's fun. Yeah. But if it hadn't been for that, yeah. when was, do you actually oh, I don't go know with if the guys? I, I always want to go. Let's but it's get never drunk on happen. a Friday night and go roller skating. Right. That's Who the not, hell says that? That's exactly. I know, but I kind but of in the want 70s, to now. In the 70s, oh, no, our, oh, and your parents were oh, yeah. here. Absolutely. Our yeah. parents, you know, I fell to go I and do that. so uh, hard. The yeah. Yeah. bastard yeah. cut me yeah. off. I'm telling you, you, yeah. you do not want to see me on roller skates. I went straight tailbone. I thought it broke it. My dad, that was his thing, is in the 70s, he'd go bowling, and they get like three pitchers of beer. Yeah. And each. now, yeah, now yeah. each. My dad. <laughs> I want to go by the bowling way, again too. My dad has the greatest line for bowling. It's the secret to bowling is not accuracy; it's altitude. So as high as you, you can throw the ball, as high as you can get it, you're yeah. gonna do really well. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I've done that panels. before, where you're like, it's gonna hit the roof panel, it's gonna hit the roof panel. Ah. Oh. Yep. My buddy did that, and I was like, proper time to go. We were so <laughs> drunk at that point. What? So, you got so uh, moving forward, um, we're going to talk about just some fun stuff now. Oh, this is always good. This is always much more entertaining than the, the serious <laughs> stories. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to, this is one of those ones where I'm going to have you guess where this story goes. <laughs> Fucking Putnam County. <laughs> no, it's I'm actually gonna... the Bronx. <laughs> what? Yeah. We're not doing something about fucking Florida? No. Nope. Holy shit. Florida man. It's not in this story. Uh, he may be later on because we just just had a hurricane. So I mean, the idiots uh, arrive. Chase, you got to do the same thing as us. Like whenever you're reading something on the news, and it's like Florida man kids caught fucking boa constrictor or something, you're like, God damn it, why is it gonna be from Florida? <laughs> I, why? I, I do think that because we just. I don't think we have the dumbest people in the nation. That title is reserved for California. But I think that we we have the people who are. We just have so many different types of people. That's crazy. Yeah. So you will find drug-related issues as well as the man oh, yeah. who strangles a twenty-foot uh, B- Bernie, Burmese python or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. I think like I literally think to survive and thrive in Florida, you have to be somewhat crazy. Yeah. Because that's everybody here is insane. Yeah. And it has to be the heat. I'm imagining. We've got the rednecks north of Orlando, and we've got cartels south of Orlando. Mm-hmm. I mean, but, you know, right. Join the fun. Yep. All right. So. A preschool, a four-year-old girl, brought home blank off of uh, the playground, thinking it was teeth. Oh, thinking it was was teeth. teeth. Thinking it was teeth. Uh, hmm. What is blank? Brought home thinking it was teeth. Like individual teeth? Yeah, thought it was individual teeth. I don't know, cigarettes or joints? Mm-mm. Uh, baggies of cocaine. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> ah! Vials Nickel- of cocaine. Yeah. Nic- oh. Nickels and dimes of cocaine. Yep. Showing so, bags about yay big. So. She brought sh- home 10, but the report only <laughs> states 4. <Yeah. laughs> she came home with 25, but 15 of those won a The guidance counselor got a hold of it first. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so she. has been very was, productive as of lately. <laughs> oh, all my students are doing great! So. A uh, mother of New York of New York City daughter uh, brought back crack cocaine from her preschool. Wow! And uh, I thought crack cocaine died in the nineties. Uh, oh no! Crack I thought it was never been dead. I crack's it was still a, big here. I thought it was a Kentucky thing. Mm-mm, crack is still really <laughs> no, big in the south. Well, what's big now is fentanyl. And oh, oh fentanyl. yeah, any right. kind of opioid is is never. Opioids have been around like huge and massive. And I mean, killing untold numbers of people for the last 15 years. I don't know how there's this resurgence in that. I mean, I know it was big in the 60s and 70s. It, it and, has to and do with doctor kind of farming. Thing. So, like, I, and I can remember this, like, I, and I, they know this. From when I was in law enforcement, I would average one orthopedic surgery a year. Like, I broke my fifth and fourth metacarpals. I broke, uh, I broke all kinds of stuff. Anyway, literally every single time I'd go to the doctor, they're like, all right, you broke this. 
you know, we're going to have to, like, put you in a little thing. You're going to have to heal up. No surgery, no nothing. Don't worry about it. I'm like, here's cool. The They're like, here's some painkillers. And, I mean, not just, like, little, like, 30-day supply, but, like, 90 days of, like, Roxy's, which are high-end opioids. And they're like, here's 90 days worth of Roxy's on the house, bruh. Uh, there you go. You get high as fuck. But people specifically with addictive personalities just keep falling that Chasing and the dragon. Chasing. And chasing. And next thing you know, they're shooting heroin in their dick. And and that really does happen. So, like, it, it the opioid epidemic actually has been going on for a very long time. It's just with Facebook now and all the, the all the media attention you, that's been given it is why everybody's like, oh my god, this is horrible. It's actually been fucking... It's been happening for a long time. Oh, 2017 itself had 70,000 overdoses. Uh, if you were to go back, like, it, seriously, if you went back 15 years, you would start to see a steady incline in overdoses, opioid overdoses, and it just keeps rising. Because it's just, I don't know, it's the drug of choice. It's ridiculous, though. Oh, yeah. But, so, the uh, mother of this child, the child came home, extremely hyper. Huh. Someone who's playing with a little cocaine. Huh? She said, these teeth taste terrible. Oh, poor little thing. Yeah. Ate the damn... Yeah. Oh. Um, and oh. asked her mom if she should put them under her pillow so the tooth fairy would come. Oh, poor little thing. Now, Dude. if you've ever done cocaine, and I don't recommend it... Um, uh, I actually have not. Accidental exposure? Uh, not accidental exposure, but never will do it again. Yeah, accidental exposure. Uh, um... It was not it's, fun. It's like the worst energy drink you've ever been on. It's it's like getting cranked up to 11 really fast and then crashing just as fast. Huh. Yeah, like four hours. It was like yeah. I remember four hours. It was four hours of like, woo! And then immediately like, bah, I can barely move. Mm -hmm. It was bad. But so she came home and told her mother, asked if she should put these under her pillow so the tooth fairy would come. The mother's first reaction is, why are these teeth in vials? That would be a good question. <laughs> Not, gonna, where did you get the teeth? That's kind of serial killer <laughs> Now, where did you get the teeth, but uh -huh. why are they in Imagine vials? Imagine this jar full of teeth. Yeah, it would all up. That reminds me of like, uh -huh. what my daughter would do. Oh, but, so, so um, she contacted the preschool, which was a privately owned preschool, and the preschool owner is stating that she did not find them on their premises, that somebody had been throwing them over the fence. Well, then she found them on their premises. Because that's how, you know, yeah. I deal with my <laughs> yeah. drug dealers. Yeah. I tell them to throw stuff onto my property. Yeah. That's right. Throw, throw it into my playground, please, yeah. where there's a bunch of four- and five-year-olds running around. Yeah. That's what I want. That's how I want my drugs delivered to me. Yeah. Like, you know, just that off chance. I mean, I guess it's possible that it happened, but it's also possible that it didn't happen that way. Exactly. It's possible the owner was walking through and accidentally dropped four vials of fucking crack cocaine. That's, That's right. what it sounds like to me. Yep. But, so, story just ends there. There's not much going forward with it. No investigation into the preschool, nothing like that. But yeah, it was crack cocaine this, yeah I mean, in a you Bronx can, there's no real school. evidence that they did anything so there's no you know what I mean there's no you could literally I mean yeah conceivably you could you could fingerprint the bottles and you can compare those fingerprints against the fingerprints of the staff Mm -hmm. But even then, you don't have probable cause for that. Yeah, because you don't. Yeah, you don't. Right. I mean, you know, like, you like know anybody could have touched it. Yeah, yeah, you don't know at that mm -hmm. point. And then because that wouldn't prove shit. Yeah, like there. Yeah, once it's left the property and the mother's handled it and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, the that's chain, that's chain of evidence is just right. And then the pillow and like yeah. no, you know who who else? It's might all have. destroyed at that yeah. point. All right, so just moving forward real quick. Um, Houston officials block. I'm going to give you guys another guess. Blank, blank, brothel. Uh, well, if it's a brothel. But, but blank, it's a, blank. It, it, it's got a specialty brothel. <laughs> oh. Is it a gangbang brothel? Is it no. a, a transsexual brothel? No. I'm going to go with a bestiality brothel. No, you're all wrong. What? It is a sex doll brothel. Huh. That seems a little bit... Nicer. <laughs> seemed, I mean, I mean, I'm not yeah, saying. But, it hold doesn't, on. Wait, it's wait, wait, like, wait. I'm picturing being the guy number two walking in there, and being like, "I want Susie hanging off that wall there." Yeah. Like that's really fucking. I know. Gross. Like 
<laughs> like, is like the headmistress lady like is she also a sex doll? Yes. Like, who like, who, or is it just some like creepy guy that just stands there and like, like which one do you should want? Which one you I'm pretty sure everyone in there is probably creepy. Uh, but but this, hey, you at know, least you from a justice normal. perspective. You're not dealing with with yeah. women who have individual rights who are sold into sex trafficking. You're dealing with the doll. Yeah, I'm, and yeah, I'm, but that's like you a, overhead you're saving on. You're really. Saving I'm not an overhead. advocate for it. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, hey, you he's he's the one like, jam it up. Oh doll. my god! We, oh god! His, 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 uh, one jam it up with sex trafficking. Your next trip. Being. If you go to Houston soon, and I'm gonna I'm follow you to make sure. I'm gonna make sure. I'll be there in 36 hours. Right after I get my beignets. I'm He's got this awesome selfie game. with him and the doll, and yeah. he's just like, nope, unfollow, unfollow. So um. this is actually this is actually not the first one by this company. They actually oh, have an company. active... <laughs> is, there one, is this the There's one from like Europe? A, no, Empire. Toronto. Oh. Special. And There's, it's called Kinky S Dolls S. There's a sex robot cafe that they were trying to open, I believe, in Germany. And it was doll, or not dolls, but rope like robotic. I'm just saying that's those robotic things are. That's how it turned out. But it was did not look like a person. Oh, but it was designed to pleasure. So, so that's you were having sex with R two D two pretty. Much. You were yeah. Bang, with, yeah, you yeah, were with R two D two. Yeah, you put your dick in a computer. Yeah, yeah you next like, thing. <laughs> uh, but next no, they stopped it. They said no, that actually is still prostitution somehow. I don't know how, but they're like no, no. Wait, it's because it's, it's artificial it's, intelligence. It's, 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 yeah. So they're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is how, this is how this is how Terminator starts. The T one thousand busts through the door. <laughs> You've been having sex with our women. <laughs> You're sex trafficking hey, these funny, robots. So, me and Stefan were actually just recently talking about this is that there's a video that came out about because you know Google's been playing around with AI yeah oh yeah so Google this is their second attempt at creating AI they decided to videotape it they create so they have it all on a separate system not touching the internet or anything they're just spoon feeding it little pieces of information mm -hmm. one day they take the entire history of mankind and they download it to one server it takes them however long but they take it boom they have it all here boom the entire history of mankind mm -hmm. they're like we're going to turn this AI loose on it so they turn the AI loose on it. They let it sit in there for, I don't know, like a couple of days. Gave a sex addict, didn't it? So, no, 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 something like that. <laughs> and they're like, we're going to ask it questions when it comes out. Because it's supposed to be this fresh brain, this fresh perspective on everything. Pops out and they go, okay, what do you think the next step for mankind should be? And the AI went, it's on video, it goes... You should all be exterminated. <laughs> you are a plague on the planet. And the planet will be better off when you're all dead. And everybody's like... What, did it just say to kill all of us? <laughs> did it just... Hold on a second. So, what you're saying... And this, the computer's like, what I'm Terminator's saying real. is, you should all die. And they're like, oh, fuck this, let's shut <laughs> down. Like, they strapped the whole fucking thing. But there's video floating around in this fucking computer going, you should all be exterminated. I'm, I'm terrified for <laughs> AI, because you know it's going to control the dumb shit that we all want and need, like microwaves. And of course you're going to get like the one microwave that's a dick. And he's gonna, you don't need another Hot Pocket, fat boy. <laughs> Fuck you, Paul. There. You don't get to warm up your donut. So I guess I don't, I don't think about it. You eat your Krispy Kreme cold. I don't think about it because it's just not present in our daily lives yet. But then again, 20 years ago, none of us were thinking about cell phones really because mm. they weren't present in our daily lives. Exactly. But now you can't live your life without it. I think when AI becomes more prevalent, in our society, then we'll we'll start thinking about it. Right now, it's obviously a luxury if it even exists. Yeah. Really, yeah, yeah. But we're actually well, I mean, kind of starting to like we're starting to kind of Alexa and stuff yeah, like right, this. things are really starting to push forward. Like which, by the way, that the Google cars, the driverless cars. Which they, I'm a fan of all this stuff. Alexa, and I'm a fan of it going down this Alexa trajectory. Yes. But She's but a when, but when we have second. when we have these people that are saying. Well, now it's starting to get into personal invasion of our right. You know, Google can see everything. What you guys were talking about, the Apple Watch uploading to the mm. cloud. Like, Apple's invading our price. You guys wanted it. Yeah. And by you guys, I mean yeah, all the people. Yeah. We, we all wanted, wanted it. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Wanted yeah. we yeah. bought it. We, right. we, we said we, we wanted the integration. We want Dropbox, and we want Apple, the iCloud, and we right. want Google Docs. People, we want all these things to be integrated in our lives right. to make them easier. Right. People, mm. because people don't, people are, they're not patient, and then they, like you said, they want it. You want the integration. You literally just want to be consumed by, oh, I just want to be able to do this, 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 and this, and this, and this. And it's like, yeah, but at what cost? You have to kind of, well, people don't really understand. Like with the word, like with Alexa. Alexa literally can hear every single thing that you say. Yeah, by the every way, I thing. must have been saying I wanted to go to a party last night because Alexa in my room is connected to my lights. 
because I'm a fat ass and I don't want to get up and turn off my I eyes. have the same thing. I, I got the little box. Well, Somebody sent it to me. You're a fat ass some too. Freaking, so. So some no, freaking Chinese company mul- sent it to me and I thought it was my dad. And I'm like, are you sending me smart devices? He's like, fuck no. And then it's, But then nobody's ever owned up to it. So I got like a smart plug, a smart heater from some random Chinese company well, and the, nobody's ever... On. Look, oh, okay. The, China can see how boring... Chubby. Because you're chubby. <laughs> we're, going, we're going back to... <laughs> yeah, that, that would be an interesting ploy. Just take it as an aside if we're off topic, of course. But imagine what the, 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 the foundation behind something like that would be is if a company wanted to just send out thousands if not millions of packages like you got yeah. to just gain information oh, yeah. yeah cuz i have no clue where they came from and the only person that it's like everybody's going to open it away. right but like with, with like with my Most father people will use it but it was around christmas and my dad my dad did the google home for my brother and i've started to do more of the integrating cuz i think it's a really cool idea i just love technology um, so i thought okay cool he sent me this plug and then you got to go to houston then and then <laughs> whatever makes it where he doesn't have to stand up and i walk. will be <laughs> Oh, I cannot wait. If this chair can lift my ass up, oh It was the best trip I've ever been on. <laughs> it was a very stimulating trip. Did you trip. hear about right. the new... So oh, speaking of like, technology, who has to, like, the who hack, crushes those dogs? The new Facebook hack? Something oh. like 50 billion users, all their personal information. I was oh, part yeah. of that. It was 50 million, and it had to do with a geographical location, which they didn't disclose. Oh, 50 million. And mm, it's probably it's, Ocala. But yeah, alone. I don't know where. I, honestly, enough, I, I don't know where it was. But I don't I was know where in a lot it was of places last year. Yeah, and they they wouldn't just they wouldn't uh, detail the exact timeline and the physical location where it happened. But they so they made millions and millions and millions of people reset their passwords as a. Yeah, you know, but I mean that happened with Ex- Experian or Equifax. Yeah, Equifax. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's like yeah. you're trusting yeah, the people, three agencies yeah. Yeah. to deal with your taxes <laughs> and personal information. Yeah. Right. Oh, by the way, one of them got the people hacked. who control right. one of the credit bureaus. Right. Ah, so, uh, got it. Well, hacked. it's like a few yeah. years ago, I signed up for. Uh, I got the Target card the same week oh, that yeah, Target got, got hacked, hacked. Mm-hmm. and I'm just like. Okay, I mean, if you yeah, want to go after my yeah, credit, good luck. Credit card but going back to that, yeah, they can hurt their own scenario, credit card after mine. We, I don't we give care. these companies, we give these organizations, just too much power. Absolute yeah. power, and and it's not. It, it's we don't go into it knowing, hey, that we want this to be the end result. It's just, right. it's a progression, yeah. right? Well, all, to me, it started with the location-based stuff. Every single thing needs a location now. You can't freaking go on. Anything without? Well, you want us to know your location so we can help you out better? No, I don't. I don't. I mean, I understand they they have it anyway yeah. because they have the technology to where Bites companies you can have my location. well companies <laughs> will sell your location. Yeah. So essentially, what it does is like if you go to a Publix and you sign in and you say Publix, blah blah blah. Well, now Publix has the ability to sell your essentially like your IP to other stores in the area. So if you go by a plaza and you're like, oh, I wonder why I randomly got a Walgreens email. It's because there's companies that sell your information to Correct. other companies, and then they, and then they are able to, uh, then yep. they're able to through, through give marketing. Them. They they call that retargeting, and it's right. smart. Like it, it's, you know, that's yeah. why when you go on your internet browsers after looking at something, you'll see something that uh, that you were looking at a week ago or a day ago. That's why your phone, right. when you get home, says Google says you were at this place. Would you like to review? Yeah, like and I'm like, hell no, Google's. I don't want to review. Like that drives me insane. Like I turn my location stuff up, even though it literally does nothing. No. To because I just I I hate the oh we can't because if you look at apps and you download games, they need information from your phone that they would never actually need. Yeah, actually like need why do you need access need to my camera? camera. Yeah. Why do you need my microphone? microphone. Mm-hmm. With data, your friends. I'm like I'm I'm trying to download a game for my four year old. It's, this is a puzzle game that's just going to help her learn. Why the fuck do you need all of this other information for her to literally play a Nick Jr. game? And they and they just and like but just like you said, everybody wanted it. We all asked for easier access. We want access to the world. Mm-hmm. But then there's a huge downside. Well, I mean, if if you look at it from a political standpoint too, like we have. Uh, th- so the social justice warrior movement really just sp- spurred out of I don't know. Let you you could take it back to the the women's liberation movement of the eighties. Mm-hmm. You could pay, take it back to segregation of the late sixties. Right. You could take it to discrimination against the Irish back in the early nineteen hundreds. Right. What, whatever you want to talk about. I mean, there's a, there's a definite point in time. I mean, even even Jews throughout all of history have been persecuted. Oh my okay. God! Yeah. Well, yeah so Jews. so yeah, look Jesus. at look at. You know, just these social justice 
movement. You know, we, we give we give in on this topic and then the envelope is pushed on this topic. And then we give in on this topic and then the envelope it, it, with technology, the same happens. We give in on something, and then these companies come in and they push the envelope on every oh, yeah. other topic. Too. Right, right. Yeah, they just make it a blanket thing. It's like, oh, well, they're okay with this, and obviously, then this, 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 and this. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's amazing, like, where we talk about the how we haven't made certain advances yet. Like, it's like you, we have access to all the information in the world. And to me, it's like we should be advancing. I, I wish people, and I, I'm more, everybody's guilty of it, but I would love for people to use that. If people put as much time into, like, curing cancer as they did, like, making memes, we'd be so much better off as it's, a society. It's, it's, hey, enti- it's entirely possible there there is a cure for a type or two of cancers. Right, there's, but there's I'm just using so it as a types. generalization. We don't clearly know about it. I think there is big money in, in pharmaceuticals. Oh, so definitely. I, I, I live next to Pfizer as, forever. As an individual, I personally find it to be a moral you know challenge that that a company would hold down a cure that could save millions of people for the advancement of profit that being said i mean we i mean we see shit that happens all the time with car dealerships how they screw people on pricing and financing simply to make money so it's like at the end of the day <laughs> at the end of the day used to be people, salesman. <laughs> people are people will follow the money yeah oh yeah greed is, is the yeah oh yeah i could we could literally have like a Two hour long episode about how the car industry deaths. Oh, over. same thing. Like when I worked at Dillard's, like the things that at Dillard's, and I only sold clothes, but the 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 ethical dilemma that I faced on a daily basis at this place, I'm like, I'm selling clothes. But, like, but should now, I really have an? Should I? Because you, the things that they expect you to do or do, I'm like, push the cards on people when they're right, at checkout. Right. Or, okay. Let's take it to the next level, though. When it comes to clothes and when it comes to cars, are we really pushing an ethical envelope, though? Because people willingly show up at your location, your premise, right. with the with the objective to buy or purchase. Right. Something. Well, it's the way. It's like a. It's to. It's more of a, like a manipulation. Like it's the I, cancer or medical purposes. I feel like is a whole different ethical perspective. Right. But like, mm-hmm. if someone shows up at your car dealership. I don't. I don't know about you guys, but I don't just go down to the Toyota dealership because I want to waste an hour. I probably should because right. those guys are right. hu- wonderful human beings. But <laughs> most people don't just no, show up yeah, at a no, car dealership. No, you know shit exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The sarcasm oh, is strong. Yeah. You, won't, this you won't offend him. Oh, God, this guy. Yeah, no. I, was a, I was a raging. I was one of the best in the world at it. I was a complete dick. And that's how you do it. Like yeah. that's how the best employees at Dillard's were guys that got away with stuff that I'm like, I want to smash your yeah. face in every yeah, single you, day. It was more of an employee problem than a customer problem. Yeah, if you yeah. could do the whole like, hey, look what this hand is doing, don't worry what this hand is doing kind of trick. If you could do that and successfully pull that off, you made tens of thousands of dollars a month. I mean that is just the pure and skinny of it. You know, and every once in a while you, you that little ping would catch up with you and you're like yeah. I gotta be good this week. I gotta be good today. Oh, it's, uh, I, I should donate a dollar to yes, this like, I forget which is a horrible Flam- organization. Uh, I think it was. I, I honestly want to say it's Bill Gates uh, broke on the immunotherapy thing that's been that came out. He was the driving force behind. Let's go ahead and push this out into human trials and stuff like that. He invested so much money in these companies mm-hmm. and everything else, and it's being quoted as you know like the. The breakthrough drug of our... What is it? What it is it? It's immunoth- Im- immunotherapy, therapy. basically where they revamp your immune system to fight diseases. Yeah. And antibiotics they, completely strip it. Yeah. Instead of instead of adding something to your body, they just revamp what's already there yeah, they, to fight it for you. Yeah, they could, it's basically super soldiering your white blood cells. Yeah. Okay. Like, so for they re- lack of a better way of putting it. Mm-hmm. So basically what they do, and this is because I was reading the story earlier, is basically, so they take, in the form of HIV, they take, because the body fights HIV, mm-hmm. but it can't break it down. Yeah, can't beat it. Um, so now what they've done is they've taken certain white blood cells, and they just made one little piece of the white blood cell thinner. They just implemented DNA that made it thinner. Now it's breaking down these HIV uh, cells, because it can get in between... The barrier, or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> and all you're doing is just implementing white blood cells that have this specific mutation that's not harmful to your body, but 
using it as an advantage, and they do it with multiple things. They've they've tested it on. Um, it was like colon cancer was the other one, and they um, they did like a. Uh, it's like a fecal transplant or something yeah, like that, transplant. where because your fecal matter holds they, a lot of amino, uh, amino. I think uh, it's a reverse base. colonoscopy. Yeah. Well, yeah. What they do is they take good. They take the. They take poop that has good bacteria, right. in it, mm-hmm. and they reinsert that up. Yeah, they do. Gen- they did in the immunotherapy gen- on the bacteria to mm-hmm. let it fight certain things, mm-hmm. and it was it broke down polyps that mm-hmm. start and turn into cancer, and that's like. You got to have these people that are wanting to put these things out, and that's why you're. We're thankful for people like Bill Gates and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's pretty easy to say I want to be a good person, but to act on it mm-hmm. is the thing. It's and your money where your mouth is. So exactly. Speak. Yeah, and it's that thing like Bill Gates. It's that old adage: if Bill Gates stops to pick up a hundred dollars, it costs him, more money. Cost it cost him more money yeah, to stop money. and pick up that hundred dollar bill that he just made. And well, he, I mean, there's been some depressing things though that's happened lately. Like I told you, like the whole rollback of the EPA. Mm-hmm. You know, in 2020, we're supposed to have cars. We're supposed to have a mandatory 54 miles per gallon rating. Every single new car, no matter truck, van. You know, SUV didn't fucking matter. They all had to have 54 MPG by 2020. And Ford, actually being the biggest opponent of that, stepped up and said that they would make their cars unaffordable to the common person because it would cost them so much money to develop the engine in order to pr- in process in order to do that. So then they would have rolled back all those EPAs. Now we're getting, well, I think they said that they'll, Ford's now going to be like 32 miles to the gallon by. You know, 2020, which is complete and utter horseshit. 32, you can do 32 miles a gallon now. So it's not any kind of improvement. Like, there's just way too much greed in this world. You know, specifically in the medical industry, the pharmaceutical the pharmaceutical stuff, they were able to trace back, like, why did everybody not want medical marijuana to come to the state of Florida? Because we were one of the biggest, we're one of the big, biggest oil-polluted states in the world. Yeah. Like, nobody buys as much drugs as we do, mm-hmm. and now that's slowly being curtailed. I'd say the aging population probably doesn't help with that yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. It and that's at all. Yeah, well, the, and that's the thing is, all the old people want to get high and fuck each other. Like, we live 30 minutes south of villages. That's all they're doing up there is smoking dope and banging the crap out of each other. in the nation. Mm-hmm. It's weird. Hey, if you're that old, you're going to do the same damn thing. Be like, I'm gonna go bang my Susie down the block. We're gonna have a key party. <laughs> Let me go ahead and roll up this joint. <laughs> Ready to rock and roll. Pop your Viagra. Time to get it on. You know, you're getting it for free. <laughs> That's all that's happening. I'm gonna take my fentanyl roll of doobie and go. <laughs> Dude, these old people, these old people are. Well, you've seen it. They're oh, yeah. constantly getting arrested for it. Bang it in the park on the Applebee's. Hey, what? Mm-hmm. Hey, who goes to an Applebee's is like, you know what, I'm so turned on, I'm banging in the parking lot of Applebee's. My onion boss is awesome it's in it's there. It's a very romantic that gesture, rib, though. That rib basket is amazing. <laughs> I should add that to my uh, Bumble as well. I will take you to Applebee's on the first date. Yeah, I'll take you to Applebee's <laughs> on the first date. But, so, we are approaching the end. We're mm-hmm. in the last few minutes. So, I just want to get everybody's, well, Jason fucked off. Um, but I just want to get everybody's last little words of advice for our listeners. We try to do this every time. So, Ziggy, what is your what is your word of advice for our listeners? Um, treat everyone with respect until they don't deserve your respect anymore. Yeah, that is my one. words of advice. Chase, and it doesn't have to be that soppy. Well, I, I was. I it, no, it, my, mine won't be that. Mine won't be a sob story. But everybody, know you know, a sob story. you guys are on every week, or you do this thing every week, so your opinions are a little bit different than mine. But I, I guess the unique perspective I bring is that I'm pretty big in traveling. Uh, do it now. Do it while you're young. Do it while you don't have kids, or do it while you only have one, or do it while you <laughs> while you have some. I'm don't, fucked. Don't 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 I'm wait until you're 45 years. I mean, I've gotten so many 60, 70 year old people tell me. Oh man, I I would have loved to go there. I would have loved to. Do that. I, I I still wish I could, but I don't have the energy. When you're younger, you have the energy. You right. may not have the money, but as you age, you will have time to make money back. But you will not gain the energy right. back. Right. So do the fun things you want to do now, even if it. And I'm not advocating for going into debt. 
mm-hmm. but I am advocating for Experience. seeing something that may not be there in 50 years or Absolutely. in 20 yeah. years or in yeah. 10 years. Yeah, very that's true. true. Very true. That's cool. true. Jason, we're giving everybody our last minute words of advice before the end of the show. Jason, he's going to die. Uh, I do. I do. I'm doing terrible. I hear you, again. man. I'm. I'm just. Uh, just you fucking Christ, this guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy. So the, the <laughs> running gag My advice is this fucking yeah. guy. Uh, well, no, I'll just. I'll have to show you the video later of why I bring this up all the time. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as an aside, real quick, I walked over 1,800 miles in six months. Fucking hell! I I when I was when I was really yeah. I I walked 18 in a year. Yeah. Uh, and I did statistics about it on my last Facebook post uh, for my the whole round the world travel. I burned over 500. Thousand calories. Jesus. So it's like every day I was walking on average uh, twelve miles a day. Yeah. See, that's not. What were you eating? I was eating whatever I wanted to. I was burning like four thousand well, calories. Well, you know, yeah. you need to. Yeah, you need to you have need a high protein. Calorie yeah, yeah, and like, calorie, so, yeah. Were you eating like every two to three hours, or just stuff fucking food in your mouth? Oh, you don't. Were you a snacker? It was pretty cheap. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, you would have to. Yeah, yeah, because you wouldn't be able to physically oh, and, do anything. And another reason why I've known you for twenty years, and you are a snacker. I, and, and I'm also <laughs> frugal. Another reason why the Philippines <laughs> is my favorite country is because I love rum. You can buy an entire bottle of rum. I'm talking about a one liter bottle of rum for one dollar and twenty. Sense. There's that's the Lord That is that's go not a lie. Right? Rum is my like favorite alcohol. Thirty five to forty five percent. Uh it's not a lie. That's how cheap it is. In fact, Coca Cola costs more. There are bars that will charge more for a double or uh more for a single sh- uh, uh drink than a double or a triple. You want th- because Coca Cola may cost more than rum costs. Jesus. Good God! I want to go to the Philippines now. For I two dollars, you got a great night. Yeah, I yeah. 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 My advice, I guess, is go to the Philippines. Uh, I mean, if you like rum, go to the Philippines. No, for real, just don't be like a shit human being. I just, <laughs> I don't understand. How prophetic! I just you don't get it. So well. it. But it's true. There's <laughs> People no, there's, are shitheads now. There's literally no better way to say. It. Just be a good person. Like I understand. There's always those times in your life where you may so do like things me? that are yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> that may do things that are not. You know, like you will regret. You're gonna make mistakes. I totally understand that. I'm not saying that anybody lives a guilt-free life. But I just, especially the way the the state of this this country is. Just, I just don't get like all the hate. Like, I am very, like, I just met you an hour ago. I literally have no problem with. I'm any, a horrible person, and you could be, but I don't know that. I'm not. These are I'm kind of a shit person. Foul. Yeah. Okay. Well, then get the fuck off this <laughs> podcast. This will never air. Uh, that, that's not true. I just want to clarify. Yeah. That let's, let's, let's clarify that. Clarify. Ziggy's just fucking around. Okay, yeah. People. Right. Oh, <laughs> you know some people. Um, that's yeah, I might. Yeah, my advice is just just be good to people. Like, why? I mean, especially total strangers. You literally have nothing to gain from being a Think bad person. He goes to like he he was in Honduras getting held up. If he acts like a dick in another country, like this situation ends. Yeah, like, this pretty, situation ends really badly. It's pretty easy to tell that I'm not a local. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, it's like, not hard. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I, know I know you can't see him, but uh, for as much as he's traveled, he's he doesn't have white. a huge tan. I mean, <laughs> well, so he's, he's tanner than me. He's but from I'm... the mountains of Caucasus. <laughs> He's, so he's an albino. Yeah, he's an yeah. albino. He's, he's got vitiligo. That's what it is. He's just like all of you guys. He's just got vitiligo. So my advice, because you guys all want sappy, I go funny. Um, my you advice. Sappy? You <laughs> get sappy. I said travel. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. Do it before, before you get yeah. young, before you get old, you sappy. It's bastard. true. I got a buddy. I got a buddy that's literally riding his bicycle around the country with his girlfriend. Because they both yeah. got to a comfortable place. That that. They got a comfortable place. They're in their late twenties. They got a comfortable place where they had enough money. Where they're like, "Hey, we're gonna take like the next year off and just ride our bikes across they, the entire they pack country." Their own like tents. Yeah, and stuff? everything. Hey, they jo- literally gotta, are on okay, bike, mountain got a bikes. Joke for you riding. Real quick. Do you know how uh, sex is while you're camping? It's intense. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! He yeah, a dad he's already. He had a dad. He had a dad, dad already. Joke. I'm not a dad, but I got that joke. Dad, a dad that you don't that you might not know. I got about. lots of. You have yeah. like kids in all I different have no countries. Kids that I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, he's got a little brown eyed brown. Yeah, no, he's got a little everywhere. Filipino kid running around. <laughs> I, you know, they're so. T- I just I didn't find Filipino women to be all too attractive. Although I find Middle Eastern women to be. Oh yeah. oh yeah, gorgeous. Oh yeah. But so my word of advice is if uh, if you're going to patron a 
sex doll brothel, make sure they have an A health code rating. Mm. And that's all I'm going to say. True. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. (laughs) We'll be back next week with more of this crap and useless information. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube at Geek Culture. Boy, isn't that fucking appropriate.